And what better reward for a monkey than a banana? Giving a monkey a banana has got to be the most cliche thing I have seen in this entire video. Your view of biology is clearly way down here <laughs> compared to your view of engineering. That's why. Hey guys, Samantha Deal with Realizing Research, and today I'm reacting to the Neuralink Mind Pong video. That is where Neuralink put a microchip into a monkey, and that monkey is capable of playing Pong, the video game, with its mind alone. I'm very excited to talk about this. I posted a video a few weeks ago where I talked about why scientists are not incredibly excited about Neuralink. I ignored the actual brain-machine interface for the most part because I focused on how this is going to be used to actually cure disease. Before we get knee-deep into this reaction video, I need to say two things. The first is I was called out in my last video by HVM. Thanks for keeping me honest. The only electrodes that I was aware of trying to replicate the visual system is the artificial retina. He pointed out that there have been groups that have actually placed electrodes into the visual system. They're about as good, if not worse, than the artificial retina, but they are a starting point for Neuralink. They will need to do a lot of work in order to reach the complexity of what we see within our environment, and they will need to do even more work before they reach to the point where we have superhuman visual systems. Second thing I need to say is if you came here for Rainbows and Butterflies, if you are an Elon Musk super fan, maybe you should go watch someone else. I am hypercritical of what I see. I know that as a scientist, a lot of research that has been published has been proven to be unable to be repeatable. If you are trying to sell me something, it seems even more likely that what you're showing me is biased. So I'm going to be critical, I'm going to be analytical, I'm going to talk about the positives and the negatives and just some fun facts along the way. Let's get into it. This is Pager. He's a nine-year-old macaque who had a Neuralink placed in each side of his brain about six weeks ago. You know, it's really interesting that they say this was placed in his brain about six weeks ago because it was announced by Elon Musk on, I think, January 31st, which is about eight weeks before this. So I'm guessing that this is another monkey, or maybe they placed a second microchip uh, several weeks after. I'm not really sure what the reason is, but nonetheless, interesting to know. And he does have two actual microchips within his motor cortex in order to uh, get a both his hand and his arm motion uh, and refine the actual signal. If you look carefully, you can see that the fur on his head hasn't quite fully grown back yet. He's learnt to interact with a computer for a tasty banana smoothie delivered through a straw. So this is very standard animal behavior training. You give them a task and then you give them a reward that is highly motivating. In this case, it's banana smoothie, which is probably delicious compared to his normal diet. This doesn't mean he's starved by any means. Uh, it just means that this is something very good. And he is capable of interacting with the computer in order to move uh, the cursor over to the block. Uh, this requires a 2D hand motion, so um, not incredibly complex, but you can't expect incredibly complex tasks on a computer for a monkey. They are capable of doing a lot, but uh, this is something that would be very simple to train. Um, and then on top of it, the actual recognition within uh, the electrode may be much simpler, just moving in two dimensions. We can interact with the Neuralinks simply by pairing them to an iPhone just as you might pair your phone to a Bluetooth speaker. So yeah, they're pairing wirelessly to uh, the actual electrodes within the monkey's brain uh, through Bluetooth. I'm not terribly familiar with the Bluetooth capability, but I have heard for those people who are worried about having their brain hacked or whatever, Bluetooth is considered uh, very safe. Honestly, I think one way to remove the threat is to just make all of the re electrodes read only instead of having them read and write. I'm not aware if that would actually create some complexity within the engine but then at that point, the most that someone could do is actually read uh, your brain waves from whatever region they're recording from. They wouldn't be able to stimulate your brain in some way that could be detrimental to you. The links record from more than 2,000 electrodes implanted in the regions of Page's motor cortex that coordinate hand and arm movements. Yeah, so they've explained exactly what I said. Uh, they have placed these uh, electrodes into the regions that are required for hand and arm movement. Before I read that this was in the motor cortex, I was curious if it was actually within the premotor cortex. 
Um, I'm not sure if you're capable of picking up as good of signal to noise within the premotor cortex, but maybe then you could actually have an even faster response before you get to the motor cortex. I was also uh, wondering if they played around with uh, something called mirror neurons. I'm not sure if they're clustered within certain regions, but mirror neurons are really interesting in that um, how they work is whenever you watch someone perform a task, you have neurons in your brain that actually fire that replicate to you actually performing that task. And it helps you supposedly learn possibly how to perform those tasks, but obviously uh, that could be very dangerous to have an electrode that picks up mirror neurons because then every time you watch someone do something, it would be setting off off those electrodes and they would be reading an actual action potential that isn't relevant to what you want to do. So kind of interesting, but not very useful or practical. Neurons in this region modulate their activity with intended hand movement. For example, some might become more active when yep. he moves his hand up and others when he moves it to the right. Yep, I mean, that's exactly how neurons work, right? Um, they fire for whatever their intended purpose is. Uh, along the circuits that are important for the action. You would see firing of neurons that are important and suppression of neurons that are not important. And it's incredibly fast. Obviously your hands are moving like very fast. Like I'm not only moving them one direction and the other, I'm snapping my fingers. All of these things need to be taking place at the same time. But in this case, what we're doing is only just moving one up and down, right and left, right? By recording from many neurons and feeding their activity into a decoder algorithm, we are able to predict Paige's intended hand movements in real time. Right, so this is makes perfect sense. This is how a neural network works. You give it the training data. In this case, it's which uh, electrodes are actually picking up a signal uh, whenever the hand is moving up or down or right or left. You keep doing that over and over and over again, and eventually the neural network gets trained or uh, becomes a decoder, as he says, to actually determine whether or not uh, a specific signal means to go up or go down um, or right or left. First, we calibrate the decoder by recording neural activity as Pager uses the joystick to move a cursor to targets presented on the screen. Yep, so calibrate is essentially what they mean by training, right? You're training it. As he's playing this game, we're wirelessly streaming, in real time, the firing rates from thousands of neurons to a computer. Right, so these are the actual uh, neuronal signals, which is kind of interesting. Whenever you perform electrophysiology in the lab, typically what you do is you actually see uh, the voltage change within the neuron or next to the neuron as an electrical potential. I wonder if they, because they're recording from so many different electrodes, if they've just set a threshold or if you can actually see slight changes, you might actually be able to record what's called false starts. So like uh, there is some kind of signal going on around those neurons, but it's not enough of a signal to actually turn into um, a full-blown actual potential. Uh, this could be interesting just in understanding how motion takes place. I don't know if we're seeing all 2000, I can't determine by this, but I'm gonna go with not. Probably a few hundred or so, but could be wrong. Using these data, we calibrate the decoder by mathematically modeling the relationship between patterns right. of neural activity Mathematical and models. the different joystick movements they neural produce. Neural networks. This is After strength. only a few minutes of calibration, we can use the output from the decoder to move the cursor instead of the joystick. After only a few minutes of calibration, a few minutes is enough training data in order for them to actually determine uh, whether or not he needs to go up, down, right, or left. That is incredibly impressive. I wonder if there is some level of training beforehand or if in fact, because there are so many different electrodes that they're recording from, they're able to train it that fast. That is really impressive. Pages still moves the joystick out of habit, but as you can see, it's unplugged. He's controlling the cursor entirely with decoded neural activity. After a few minutes, they've trained their neural network enough in order to determine exactly where he means to go. Our goal 
is to enable a person with paralysis to use a computer or phone with their brain activity alone. Yeah, so、um, of course, those people with paralysis who have been connected to、uh, electro arrays in order to、uh, move a cursor, this does exist already. It's just that. <clears throat> you would have to train the cursor to move to say if they want to communicate to、uh, letters across the screen, and that would take quite a while. But I could see how this could be improved upon、uh, with so many different electrodes. Because they wouldn't be able to move a joystick, they would calibrate the decoder by imagining hand movements to targets. You know the thought of imagining hand movements to targets in order to、um, actually lead to an action. That is, whew, that's incredible.、Um, I wonder how repeatable that is compared to the actual action of moving. I don't know. I mean,、um, it would probably take longer,、uh, much longer than a few minutes,、uh, but nonetheless,、uh, still kind of interesting. One of the things the Neuralinks allow Pager to do is to play his favorite video game. All right, so this is where、Pong. he plays Pong. So、um, in this instance, he is not connected to an actual joystick. It doesn't require nearly as much、um, response, right? You're only moving up and down, but there is an acceleration to it, and they actually show this in their blog, which I will get to in just a minute. His paddle on the right side of the screen, Pager simply thinks about moving his hand up or down. We've removed the joystick altogether. Yeah, they say they removed the joystick. Now that he's、so、up to speed,、go. let's increase the difficulty and see how well Pager can、he's、play. He's definitely better at pong than me. I'm not. I'm not very good at pong. <laughs> As you can see, Pager is amazingly good at mind pong. He's focused. And he's playing entirely of his own volition. So, in general, this is really cool to watch. None of the biology is incredibly shocking. It's the technology that's impressive.、Uh, the monkey looks incredibly happy. He looks healthy. He doesn't look thin or anything like that. For those people who are concerned about animal rights, what he's doing is not that complex. He's moving either up or down or right or left. What people are capable of doing once they have actual microchips placed in the brain will be much different because we have an intended motivation behind it, especially those who are suffering. From paralysis, as they mention, are their primary people that they're targeting.、Uh, just because they are highly motivated for that, they want to have better interaction with the world. Finish this out. It's not magic. It's the not reason Neuralink works. It's totally is magic. It's Your brain is all magic. Because it's recording and decoding electrical signals from the brain. Great game, Pager. And what better reward for a monkey than a banana? Giving a monkey a banana has got to be the most cliche thing I have seen in this entire video. You've got all this impressive technology, and you're just feeding back into our 1950s image of what a monkey is. That's fine. Your view of biology is clearly way down here <laughs> compared to your view of engineering. That's fine. The blog is probably the most interesting part from this, biologically speaking. This type of biology, in order to train a neural network. Using the motor cortex has happened before, but seeing the actual、um, signals from it is the interesting biology. In the first figure, what they show in blue is the neurons that seem to be firing for up, and in red, you're seeing the neurons that seem to be firing for down. And it seems that there is an increase in the signal compared to the velocity which、uh, he might want to move the paddle. That's kind of cool to see. I have not seen that in the past, though I'm sure that it has been done. The next thing, and probably the coolest thing to see for me, is their 3D representation of their actual electrodes. Now, within this, you can see the dots represent where an electrode is actually connected into、um, an area within the brain. So the color actually represents、uh, what direction. Uh, you see the neuron fire for. I didn't really know how the motor cortex was organized, and I might have thought that there was some sort of like map within it、uh, in order to represent one direction or another. But you can clearly see that's not the case at all here.、Um, or if there is a map, it's very complex, and who knows? Within a given individual, it could be completely different.、Uh, we'll see with more and more data, right?
quite a few researchers have published on this and it's getting more and more complex. They're building neural, neural networks in order to understand language. Uh, they're building neural networks in order to understand learning. Um, all of these things are happening right now within neuroscience. Whether or not uh, this can be applied in or for a brain computer interface will take time. This is a relatively simple task. Um, you're not necessarily going to be playing like Call of Duty or one of your favorite video games in the upcoming future, right? Uh, unless, of course, it's Pong, then you can certainly do it. Whether or not you place something in your brain that could potentially become infected or produce scar tissue, you have to decide whether or not it's worth it for you. At this point, it is certainly not worth it for me, but we'll see where it goes. It could be great things are coming from this in the future. This video showed us some interesting technology, some really cool technology, some biology that's been around for decades, some biology that I think could be fascinating, though they don't really spend any time talking about it, probably because they really just want to sell you a product and not necessarily dive into what uh, the biology actually means. In the future, I'll be talking a little bit more about the actual brain computer interface and what it could mean for us. So if you like this type of content, please stick around. I'll see you guys later. Bye-bye. Let's just wait until this plane has passed because... Nah, y'all go ahead. Go ahead, plane. Do your thing.